how to prioritize languages when bringing up your children. If you're inevitably a multilingual family and have three, four, or even five languages that you must deal with, how do you organize yourself? That is what this Q&A video is all about. I'm going to look at a very concrete family situation and analyze it step by step. So stick with me because you might find some jewels in the details for your own multilingual family. Hello everyone and welcome. In my videos I share with you tips, know-how and useful materials. So if you're new here consider subscribing to this channel and my mailing list. Check out the link below for occasional freebies and discounts. Hello dear Jacob, what I'm gonna die. Hola querida Eva, ¿qué tal? This Q&A video is primarily for you. You asked me to help you out with a strategy for your unique case and I'm going to do my best to show you an ideal path for your multilingual family. And hey, if anyone else is watching this video and is thinking, oh, I would love to also have some help with my family situation, how to raise my kids multilingual, then don't hesitate in contacting me. I'll gladly shoot a Q&A video answering your specific questions as well. Just leave me a comment or contact me using the link in the description below. Let's get started. To begin with, I need to contextualize Jacob's and Eva's life situation. So let's take a look at the background information for a moment. Eva's first language is Spanish and her second strongest language is Catalan. Jacob's first language is Danish and his second language is English. He had lived almost 15 years in England, so he feels that his English level is equally strong. As a matter of fact, he considers himself in many ways more English than Danish because of his relationships with his friends and his daily contact with that language. Eva and Jacob live in Spain, Mallorca, for now, and their relationship language is Spanish, but also English at times, since Eva wants to practice with him English and get better at it. The resources that they have are the grandparents that can speak natively Catalan, Spanish and Danish. Additionally, they are thinking of sending their child to an international school, no matter if they stay in Mallorca or they go to live to another country. Now, what are their goals and desires? Well, they want their son to learn as many languages as possible to reach spoken and written fluency. English seems to have a high priority for them since they want to give the boy the chance to feel completely comfortable being educated at university level either in the UK or the US. However, they would also like the child to learn Danish to be able to communicate with the grandparents and have also the possibility to return to Denmark. Now come the questions. Jacob and Eva basically want to know how to speak to their child and how to incorporate teaching material in their four languages. Furthermore, they want to know what relationship language to choose, considering that he wants to keep on learning Spanish while she wants to keep on practicing English. Another question is, should they introduce a family language to be able to communicate all three of them? Taking into consideration that he can't understand Catalan and she can't understand Danish. And finally, in which language should their family speak with the son? Oof, that's a lot of questions, but all of them are important because answering them is going to help you build up a strong strategy, which is going to give your child a wonderful and safe start into his multilingual journey. I always say, es mejor prevenir que lamentar. Um, what's the saying in English? I think better safe than sorry. Well, that's definitely how it is, if you ask me. Okay then, grab yourselves a cup of coffee, a sangria, a beer, and make yourselves comfortable because here we go. Question number one, how should you speak to your son? Let's get started with Jacob. Speak consistently and constantly with your child in Danish. In other words, use the poll method. This is why. If you don't do that, your child will have no chance of picking up Danish unless you go to live to Denmark he will lose that big opportunity he has of learning an additional language for free. You as a dad, Jacob, are a very 
powerful and viable language and cultural resources. And believe me, it's likely that your child will judge you at some point in life for not having taught him Danish. As far as I know, you grew up in Denmark. That's where your roots lie and your culture stems from. That, my friend, is so important to pass on to your child so that he can build up a strong and positive self-identity, which is crucial for the development of self-esteem and confidence, the building blocks for mental health. You don't want to risk that. What's more, it has been proven that a strong and positive feeling about their parents and grandparents helps children feel safe and assured about themselves and their roots. And that is the reason, that's the main reason why you should not trade English for Danish. Besides, kids get confronted with English all the time. It's a cool language that they will encounter in songs, movies, airports, friends, in school and in their jobs. In other words, your son is going to learn English anyway, which is not the case for Danish. I understand that you want to give him the best chances to study in the future in the UK or the US, but there are ways you can achieve that without jeopardizing your native tongue. Once you have a strong bond with your child in Danish, you can start practicing English with him using the OSOL method. Check out the video above after watching this video for more information about that. But honestly, I wouldn't do that in your case. It's not necessary to teach your child English yourself. You can easily outsource that by putting your child in an English or bilingual daycare, preschool and or multilingual school or international school. You can also hire a nanny that is native in English. That can work wonders. What you have to bear in mind is that he will need intensive quality input in the first six years of his life to have a greater chance of learning English as a native speaker. When your child is a little older, you can read books in English if you want. But again, I would focus on Danish instead because the international school will take care of his English level. In your case, Eva, you should use, in my opinion, the Opol method as well, but with Spanish. If the grandmother lives close to you, make sure that your boy has regular and close contact to her to learn Catalan from her. The majority language is at the moment Spanish, so your child will pro probably learn that language faster. That is, if most of the people speak around him in Spanish. Again, once you have built up a strong bond to your child in Spanish, you can start using the OSOL methods sporadically to support Catalan. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you are getting value out of this. Thank you. And before I forget, your wish is that your son reaches written and spoken fluency in the four languages, if I understood it correctly. I must tell you that those are very high aims and that it would be probably wise to set priorities first to avoid overwhelming your child and yourselves. You can start, for example, supporting his written skills in Spanish and English, and depending on how he is developing, slowly at Catalan and Danish. Question number two. How should you incorporate books and language material in the four languages? The best way children learn languages is through real human interaction. To give your child further support, you can use books, songs, audiobooks, videos and music. Videos and music can be used in any language since the beginning. Though with books that you read and songs that you sing, you should be a little bit careful. In the first years, focus only on reading books and singing songs in your native tongues. Once your child starts speaking and is relatively fluent in using Spanish with you, Eva, and Danish with you, Jacob, you can carefully start reading books and singing songs or speaking in other situations with uh, him in Catalan or English using the one situation, one language method. But be careful not to mix unwillingly the languages. Remember that you are role models. You should only switch to another language using the one situation, one language method method consistently. Another thing that you can do that is very effective is visiting countries where the target languages are spoken. 
two or three weeks of immersion give the kids language development development a spectacular boost question number three which relationship language should you choose you need to prioritize and simplify your situation to keep you sane mostly during bad times ideally you should choose one language to speak to each other that would be the easiest thing to do but if you don't want to do that at least set a place and a time for each language for example, you can decide to speak Spanish while sitting at the dinner table in English the rest of the time, or speak always in Spanish unless you wear a scarf or something to symbolize that change to English. It is important to set boundaries so that you don't fall into mixing mode too often, which will lower the quality of both languages and lead eventually to Spanglish. Not English nor Spanish, just a mixture of both. If possible, look for an English course for you, Eva, or go to the UK, for example, for some time to polish your English. Another possibility would be that you, Jacob, speak Spanish outside home and talk to Eva only in English. Question number four. Should you introduce a family language? Actually, I shot a video a while ago addressing this precise question. Check it out by clicking on the card above. I would say for the first six years, no. After that, and depending on how your boy's language development is going, you can introduce a family language if needed. In your case, it would make sense that it is Spanish or English. Uh, I know that you, Eva, won't understand Danish in the beginning, but believe me, you will learn it along with your child. Don't have to worry about that. For now, it is best if you focus on using consistently the Opol method. Eva, you speak in Spanish and Jacob, Danish. It might feel a bit unusual in the beginning, but remember that you are doing an investment in your child's future. It will pay off, but you have to be patient. Question number five. Which languages should the family speak with the child? That is pretty simple. Every person needs to speak in their strongest language. That is the best thing that they can do. And if anyone can speak more than one language on a native level, that person gets to choose which one to use. Just tell them not to mix. That was it from my side. I hope I could give you some insights and ideas on how to, to go about passing on four languages to your multilingual child. If you still want to look at something more in depth or you need more guidance, just let me know. Thanks so much for watching this Q&A video called How to Prioritize Languages When Bringing Up Your Children. Please share this channel with your multilingual friends and subscribe to stay posted. This was Multilingual Family. Thank you again and talk to you soon.